Everyone wants to build a tech business, even if you're not a techie, right? But how easy is it to do? And what actually happens when you fail miserably? Welcome back to the My First Business Podcast. This is a mini episode where I take some of the best parts of my interviews with phenomenal entrepreneurs and chop it up for you like a snack. In this bite-sized version, you'll be hearing from Manav Sagar, who is an ex-tech entrepreneur and currently a tech VC. He's a partner at Bharat Founders Fund. Manav shared his story about getting so close yet so far with his previous tech startup. He had a genius idea solving an imaginary problem for imaginary customers. He put everything on the line for a few years until one thing finally killed his business. One day I was having a conversation with one of my friends and we used to very frequently go to this bar in Delhi and uh, you know I just told him that man the amount of money that we are spending going out right now if we would have saved so far mm-hmm. uh we could have owned this place and he's like yo what's the proof i was like well i mean yeah one one element can be my credit card bills but he's like yeah but you know uh, we can't we can't do it and i was like yeah okay i get you and then i was like i went to the restaurant owner and i said do you know who's your highest spender here and he's like yeah i do i was like where is it logged well he's like well nowhere like we don't know and i was just like huh so you if you go and you leave this restaurant who will know that who's the highest spender here he's like maybe the waiters will i was like well they go as well and i was just like that's interesting so you have a very limited oversight on who are your key paying customers and who are going to be make, who, who's making business for you right now and i had a couple of friends and i went to them i was just like guys it's isn't it kind of weird that nobody inside a restaurant or a physical outlet knows who has the propensity to pay a lot and they're like well no again they came back with the same points well the waiter knows it maybe the some people input into their billing software and billing software you can get some insights from that and all that stuff i said well anyway i don't think so uh i i have no idea i'm talking bullshit i'm out i'm going to go back to the ship that's not that's what i know what i do uh i went back sailing and on the ship And over the years on the ship we didn't have internet so we would have satellite phones and a satellite connection we would do a burst and then you'd get like a newsletter which you read and i was interestingly reading a lot of tech newsletters so i was always piqued like my interest was always piqued with technology and how the world is changing because on the ship you're so isolated because i remember once i came back and i picked up the phone and my parents are like what are you doing and i was just like i'm calling for pizza and they're like we have an app for that They're like, you know, it's bad when your that. parents are telling you. About yeah, exactly, this. exactly. So imagine, <laughs> how, imagine how far behind you can get if yeah. you're isolated in the ocean, right? Then uh, I one day got an email from these two friends of mine who I had interestingly just told them that we're going to be doing. That, what do you think about this idea? This and that, and they sent me a pitch deck. Like, like it had some images in it, it had some workflow, mm-hmm. and they said, "How about we go uh, build this." and i was like huh okay uh they're like you're anyway going to come back for 6 months you're not going to every day is sunday for you uh you can probably spend some time doing some sales or learning about how to run this and if it doesn't work out go back sailing and i was like wow this is like a as like it's a i would say it's a no brainer i have very little risk in starting a business right now and i said what's it going to take they're going to they're like x amount of money i was like sure i can put that much money and um so i can i got an i sent them an email saying well this seems interesting let's chat about it when i'm go back we're going to put like these qr codes inside restaurants and this is 2017 okay so they're like we're going to put these qr codes inside restaurants and people will scan them place an order pay and move out and that way we get crazy amount of data on every table every person who's spending we can do split bills put a split wise inside it mm-hmm. and this is going to scale this is going to be a billion dollar company showed me a revenue road map showed me all of these things which i did not understand at that point in time but i said well okay you know what you guys are the smart ones and i think especially when you've not been doing anything on that side and you go called for something which is evolving on and at land when you've always been at sea I you know you had this bias and saying yeah whatever you guys are saying is right we're going to do this so well it's only 6 months i can do that right and for the first 3 or 4 months i did not understand technology we outsourced it so my friends did not leave their jobs i did 
Well, I didn't leave it, but I was like in that six month window. I was passive. I was trying to sell, but slowly I started going to a lot of these restaurants and trying to tell them that this is the future on how people are going to order inside your restaurants. Like this is this is the future. I got so excited. So you were doing sales. Yeah, I was doing sales, <laughs> and I was so. I would say suddenly I fell in love with the problem, and. More than that, I fell in love with the process to get that problem solved. So I did not understand tech, so that's not something which I was looking at. But what I was doing was I was going and chatting with everyone. But yeah, I was I was very energetic uh, to build this startup out. Six months passed. And after six months, I was like, wait, I love this too much uh, to go back to sea. I don't want to go back to sea. Uh, we got some external validation and that's where I think this whole VC or money or fundraise process comes is that whenever anyone's trying to give you money uh, on a base level, I would say that they're telling you that what you're thinking about is right or we believe in you and you can do this right. Now we've got somebody to back us and I was like, man, I'm going to crush it now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Dreaming of different things in life. Uh, but the biggest problem was while I was doing the sales, it was a tech product and we did not have a product market fit. We did not understand how a product's going to work. In the hindsight, it's very easy to look back and, and now talk about it is that why it didn't work was it was a double-edged sword. One, inside a restaurant, you had to explain to the customer on how it's going to work. So I'm changing your experience inside a restaurant. And at the same time, I had to change it for the restaurant to understand how customers are going to. So I'm, now I'm altering business and I'm altering customers. And if I have to do that, that's like I have to teach two people on how my product will work. And it was very tough. It was very, very tough to get over the line. So um, we ended up pivoting uh, from that into another product where we were all about digitizing invoices on WhatsApp. And... What we ended up building was this, uh, like this tool where whenever you print an invoice, it'll send you a WhatsApp message from that business's WhatsApp for business account as an invoice saying, here's your PDF copy. Thanks for shopping with us. Mm -hmm. That was game changing for us because it was easier to sell. I didn't have to train anybody. I just said, you're asking for numbers anyway. Everyone has WhatsApp. You're getting customers data. We're going to do a quick read on that invoice that we're sending and understanding you know who your customers is what is they what are they buying and this killed very fast like suddenly i was converting retail stores i was converting electronic stores because you need warranties i was converting jewelry stores because you need a jewelry invoice uh so we went with this and this started going up really fast like we started getting a lot of customers on board and this scaled really quickly uh, Unfortunately or fortunately, uh, one day WhatsApp launched its official APIs for you to build on top of. Uh, and they started shutting down. They had a lot of rules and regulations around how you can actually use WhatsApp for business. And the way we were doing it, I wouldn't say it was illegal, but it wasn't within those like the framework of uh, the requirements that WhatsApp had. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they started shutting down our customers' mobile numbers because they started saying that, well, you're not meeting X, Y, Z guidelines on this. You're not verified enough. You're not mm -hmm. this and that. We were just like, oh, shit. You know what? We suddenly started seeing this growth, what we've been waiting for two and a half years. And suddenly WhatsApp is killing all of our business. I was a lot in, when my business was shutting down, I was a lot in self-doubt. Yeah. Um, of self-worth, self-capabilities. I was just like, well, this is not working out. I went to the team, I went to our investors, and I was just like, guys, I can't do this. And I feel very humbled and very, uh, I would say, I'm very grateful for all of you guys to trust me with it. And I said, I'm gonna just step down. If you wanna run it, get somebody else to run it. I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they shut down the business. We shut down the business. I signed off in the documents. All right, that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed that teaser. I think you will love the full episode. I'll leave the links in the description below or you can head on over to my website. It's nparvez.com. Before you head off, I have just one more question to ask you. Why haven't you subscribed yet?